Sutra. If you ask, if as you ask, your thing shrinks and becomes small when you enter a room. Then when you look up at the sun, is your thing pulled out until it reaches the sun's surface? If you build wounds and eaves, which can press in and cut off your thing, why then is there um, then is there no evidence of a joining when you drill a small hole? Therefore, that idea is incorrect. Commentary: If, as you ask, your thing shrinks and becomes small when you enter a room, your idea is that your thing is something you can open out and fold up and put away again. Then, when you look up at the sun, is your thing pulled out until it reaches the sun's surface? Actually, all you need to do to see the sun is to lift your face and look. But if, as you say, your thing shrinks when you enter a room, by the same token, can you take hold of your thing with your hand and pull it out of the way all the way to the sun when you look at it? If you build walls and eaves which can press in and cut off your thing, when you build a house, its walls would be able to press in and cut off your thing according to your idea. If your thing could be severed, you could also connect it up again by drilling a small hole in the wall which you can see through. Why then is there is there no evidence of a joining when you drill a small hole? For example, if there is a tear, tear in a small rope, a, a patch will be seen after it's sewn up. In the same way, if your thing is severed from itself by the walls of a house and then reconnected by a hole, why isn't there the slightest evidence of the point of connection? There certainly should be some sign of it. Therefore, that idea is incorrect. The doctrine you propose is completely mistaken. Sutra, from beginningless time until now, all living beings have mistaken themselves for things, and having lost the original mind, are turned around by things. That is why they contemplate the bigness and smallness in the midst of all this. Commentary from beginning this time until now, all living beings have mistaken themselves for things. All living beings, including being born from worms, from eggs, from moisture, and by transformation, as well as beings having form, being lacking form, beings that have thought, beings that lack thought, beings that do not have thought entirely, and beings that do not lack thought entirely. All have mistaken themselves and considered themselves to be things. They do not know that things are basically objects within their true mind, and having lost the original mind, are turned around by things. Their true minds are not fundamentally lost, but they seem lost to them. They do not know that they still have their fundamental minds. Thus, the fundamental, everlasting true mind is turned around by things. Instead of it turning things around, that is why they contemplate bigness and smallness in the midst of all this. You look and say that the thing is big, and then that it is small. That shows that you are completely upside down, Ananda. You are very pitiful. Sutra. If you can turn things around, then you are the same as the first come one. Commentary: What is meant here? To be turned around by things means to become attached to whatever outside appearance you encounter, to whatever state you are in, and to get stuck in it. As soon as you become attached, you run after things. You, your self nature loses its control and pursues external states. Once it runs outside after things, then the more it runs, the further away it gets, and the further away it gets, the more it runs. It is like when you lose your way; the longer you are unable to find a way, the more nervous you become, and the more nervous you become, the farther away you go. The farther away you go, the farther you go down the wrong road. 
following after things and being turned around by them involves the same principle. To turn things around now, what does that mean? It means not running after things, but instead having things that follow you and run after you. Things are inanimate, you say. How can they run after me? Living things can run after people, and we people can run after things because we are animate. But how can things run? Don't be too rigid in your interpretation. Things turn you around, or you turn things around. If you do not run after things, things will be turned you, uh, will be turned around by you. The meaning is that if you understand the true mind. And all external states are merely manifestations of the mind. They are things that are manifested from within your mind. Since they are in your mind, why do you want to run after them? Don't run after them. Basically, there is no separation between you and things. To turn things around is to understand that everything is made from the mind alone. That everything is a manifestation of the mind alone. To be turned around by situations is to turn your back on enlightenment and unite with the dust. To oppose the doctrine of enlightenment and form an association with external dust, mundane objects is to be turned around by things. To turn your back on enlightenment and unite with the dust is to form an Association with things. It is as when someone wants to open a business but lacks sufficient funds, and someone else offers a, to buy shares of stock. When you turn your back on enlightenment and unite with the dust, it is as if you had formed a partnership with the dust. You have joined together with it. That is to be turned around by things. If you turn things around. You turn your back on the dust and unite with enlightenment. You oppose the things which you can see now. You separate yourself from them and unite with enlightenment. It is like turning your hand over. The back of your hand represents turning your back on enlightenment and uniting with the dust. To turn your hand over is to turn your back on the dust and unite with enlightenment. Just to turn it over. That is what is meant by turning things around. If you can turn things around, you are the same as the first come one. Why is the first come one called the first come one? Because he turned his head around. He came to understand. He truly understands, and thus he is called the first come one. If you understand the true true mind, then you are the same as the first come one. Sutra, with your body and mind perfect and bright, you are an unmoving blazer of the way. Commentary: How can your body and mind be perfect and bright? You have obtained a kind of enlightenment, and are the same as the first come one, and so you have light and are especially perfect. You are an unmoving blazer of the way. Then, whatever you are in a blazer of the way. Every blazer is the drama body. A blaze of the way is a place to cultivate the way. For example, the place where the Buddha sat beneath the Bodhi tree cultivated the way and opened enlightenment is called the Bodhi place of the way. Now we are in the Buddhist lecture hall, and so it is called the Buddhist lecture hall place of the way. If you can turn things around, then what wherever you are. Is the Dharma body wherever you are is in a state of unmoving suchness. Wherever you go, there is no difficulty. Wherever you go is an unmoving place of the way. Unmoving signifies a kind of samadhi power. You can turn things around because you have samadhi power, the power of great suragama samadhi. Sutra, the tip of a single fine hair, can completely contain the lens of the ten directions. Commentary: The tip of a single hair, single fine hair, refers not to a hair on the head, but to a fine hair on the body. It can completely contain the lens of the ten directions. 
the lens of the 10 divisions are all contained on the tip of a single strand of fine hair. Such a small place can contain the lens of the 10 divisions. How vast would you say those lens are? I don't believe this principle, you say. One of my fine hairs couldn't even hold a single person, let alone the lens of the 10 directions. Not to mention a person, it couldn't support every, even a small particle of something. How could it possibly contain all the lens of the 10 directions? That is just how wonderful the Buddha Dharma is. Your lack of understanding is the Buddha Dharma lies just here. Although the tip of a fine hair is small, the small can contain the great, and the small can appear the state of the lens of the ten directions. If you have opened the Buddha eye, you can see this state very clearly. You have uh, that kind of spiritual penetration, that kind of wonderful function. In the midst of the small, the great appears. The place is small, but it can manifest a large state. How? Because you are the same as the first command. The first command can manifest the great in the midst of the whole. He can manifest the limitless unbounded lands. That is how wonderful the drama is. Sutra Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, if this in essence is indeed my wonderful nature. My wonderful nature is now in front of me. If the thing is truly me, what then are my present body and mind? Yet it is my body and mind which make distinctions, whereas the thing does not make distinctions and does not discern my body. Commentary The Buddha expounded this kind of wonderful principle, wonderful dharma, wonderful samadhi, and Ananda still did not understand. Instead, he kept talking. Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, if this thing essence is indeed my wonderful nature, my wonderful nature is now in front of me. The thing essence which can see is certainly my wonderful nature, and it is before me. Now he says it is in front of me. If the thing is truly me, what then are my present body and mind? If my thing sees me, but then are my present body and mind called. What things are they? Yet it is my body and mind which make distinctions, whereas the thing does not make distinctions and does not discern my body. My body and mind make distinctions, but my thing which does not make distinctions cannot discern my body. Sutra, if it is really my mind which causes me to see now, then the same nature is actually me and the body is not me. Commentary If it is really my mind which causes me to see now, then the same nature is actually me and the body is not me. If you say the same nature is the, truly the mind, it can cause me to see and the same nature which you can see is then truly me. I see and since I see, I know it is truly mine. But I can't see my thing, so in fact, I don't know if it is mine or not. If the thing is me, then my body is not me. It becomes a thing. It becomes a something else. When another talks, he truly causes people not to understand. It is fortunate that the Buddha has great knowledge and great wisdom, which enables him to answer as he does. Sutra, how is this different from the question the first common asked about things being able to see me? I only hope the Buddha will let fall his great compassion and explain for those who have not yet awakened. Commentary, how is this different from the question of the first common asked about things being able to see me? How is this different from what you want on at one? asked me earlier. You said, if a thing is a thing, things should be able to see me. Now the thing is in front of me and it is the same as the doctrine the Buddha spoke earlier. I only hope the Buddha will let for his great compassion and explain for those who have not yet awakened. 
world on it one i hope you will bring for the mind of great compassion and explain to me the doctrines which i have not yet understood sutra the buddha told ananda what you have now said that the thing is in front of you is actually not the case commentary you could say that ananda is confused within confusion actually though ananda is certainly not confused but he manifests the appearance of being confused in order to cause living beings not to be confused he's actually as a model for living beings he enables them to see that ananda confused to such an extent is able to become enlightened now as we look into the meaning of the sutra some sutra may be more intelligent than ananda some people may be more intelligent than ananda they will be even less confused that is the meaning of it earlier in the sutra ananda said that his thing was in front of him and had no connection with his body then he asked the buddha to instruct him about this doctrine the buddha told ananda since ananda asked shakyamuni buddha is now going to tell him what you have now said that the thing is in front of you is actually not the case you say that the thing which can see is not in front of you but your assertion your assertion is totally mistaken completely incorrect the buddha straightened him out immediately